The rumors are true. Everything you know about qualifying for the Pokemon World Championships is changing for the 2025 season. I just woke up and there's a new post from the Pokemon Company International explaining the new structure on Pokemon.com. So in this video, we're gonna go through it so that you're best prepared and have the most up-to-date information going into the new Pokemon season. The biggest change to the system is that players are no longer going to automatically earn a world's invite by earning a certain number of championship points. Instead, the top so many players from each region are going to earn an invite, plus the top four finishers at all three international championships. As we can see here, they're gonna be taking the top 125 players from US and Canada, the top 125 players from Europe, the top 100 players from Latin America, the top 20 players from Oceania, and the top 10 players from the Middle East and South Africa. This is going to give the Pokemon company more control over the number of invites handed out every year. Our current system, like it or not, was not sustainable. As the player base grew, so were the number of players that were qualifying for Worlds. And the World Championship has to be a controlled event where the Pokemon Company International has an idea of how many players they are inviting. It can't just grow exponentially with the player base, which makes sense. The more players that are playing the Pokemon trading card game, the more difficult it will become to be one of the top players competing for a world championship title. Those things don't grow with each other as the player base grows, the proportionate number of players that get to play in Worlds decreases, right? Worlds is gonna stay the same size. And now, in order to keep that size under control, this system makes sense for what the Pokemon Company International is trying to accomplish. Your ranking will be determined by your championship point total, and you earn championship points at premier events that you attend throughout the season. Best finish limits have also been updated. You can have up to four league challenges count towards your championship point total and four league cups count towards your championship point total. You can have up to six regional championships count towards your championship point total and an unlimited amount of international championships. There are three. So players that attend all three international championships will have a huge advantage in the world championship chase, but you know, they pretty much always had that anyways. It does look like there's gonna be a boost in booster pack prizing as well. It did feel pretty bad to be at a 2000 player regional championship and then finish 33rd through 64th place and walk away with only 18 booster packs. But it looks like now, if there are 2,000 players at an event, you can expect to walk away with a booster box if you finish from 33rd place to 128th place. And even if you finish in the top 256, you'll still get half a booster box. So it's nice to see that they did increase that prizing since there are a lot of players playing in day two of these regional championships now. Here in the post, it says that they're keeping cash prizing the same this year as it was last year, which was a huge improvement on the years prior, but then on the chart, it shows a decreased prize pool. Uh, I know, because I got $3,000 for finishing top eight at a regional championship this past year, and here it says only $2,000. I also think regional champions were getting 10 grand for regional wins this past year, and here it says only seven. So I think that that's an error uh, in the post, as it says right here, that they're gonna be maintaining the prize values for the 2025 championship season. So I suspect that that's just an error. Another major change that they're making to the tournament structure is that they're introducing an asymmetrical top cut system for major events, which I think is just a huge win for everybody. No more bubbling out of top eight. Now, every player that finishes with the same amount of match points as the eighth place finisher at the end of Swiss 
will get to participate in a single elimination playoff to try and win the event. So this is just great news for players that have been close to top eight or finishing in top eight is there's not going to be any more feel-bads about bubbling out of top eight on opponent's resistance or any other tiebreaker. With this comes another major win for players. They are generally decreasing the amount of day two Swiss rounds across the board. You can see on this chart here, if an event has between 500 and 1,024 players, there's only three day two Swiss rounds. If the event has between 1,000 and 2,000 players, there's only four day two Swiss rounds. And between 2,000 and 4,000 players, there's still only four day two Swiss rounds. Pretty much every major event had a grueling five Swiss rounds in day two. So even if you were only gonna finish in the top 500 or the top 256, you still had to play all five grueling Swiss rounds of day two in order to finish out your competition. Now it looks like, for the most part, we're gonna be getting four day two Swiss rounds, which is much more manageable and makes sense with the introduction of the asymmetrical top cut. We also got a list of regional championship locations and dates, as well as international championship locations and dates. It looks like the Latin American International Championships is still taking place in Sao Paulo. The European International Championships is still taking place in London at the Excel Center, and NAIC is back in New Orleans. Overall, I think these changes are great and necessary, but I do understand that some players are going to feel disheartened as it probably will get a little bit more difficult to qualify for the World Championships. I've got some thoughts on the subjects that I'd like to share in today's video, but before we get to those, let's hear a quick word from my sponsor, Dragon Shield. Most people know that Dragon Shield makes high quality sleeves and accessories for their favorite tabletop games, like the Pokemon TCG. But did you also know that Dragon Shield has a mobile app that makes it easier than ever to catalog your Pokemon TCG collection? The Poke TCG Scanner by Arcane Tinman allows you to quickly and easily scan any card in your collection, track its value, and even translate it into your language of choice. With the new social features, you can even add friends and see their collections too. I love using the Poke TCG Scanner to keep track of my most valuable cards and see what my collection is worth. Download the Poke TCG Scanner in the App Store today and start cataloging your own collection. Huge thank you to Dragon Shield for being a continued sponsor of the channel. Now I know that this announcement is going to be tough for a lot of players. Many Pokemon players feel like the World Championship invite is the only reason to play and the only reason to accrue any championship points at all. And they feel like if they can't earn a World Championship invite reasonably, then there's no point to play. I understand the sentiment, but I do fundamentally disagree with it. And I'm going to explain why. I'm a very competitive person. I've been competing my entire life. Before I became a competitive Pokemon TCG player in my 20s, I was a competitive runner and I ran all through middle school, high school, and I competed at the Division Three level in college and even won a national title in the distance medley relay my senior year. So, I'm very familiar with competing. And being a Division Three athlete, I was very familiar with competing for the love of the game. There was no money, no scholarships, no glory, no sponsorships, none of that in Division Three athletics. We're really just competing to push ourselves and enrich ourselves through the bonds that we made with our teammates and through the act of competing itself. Now, I know that being internally motivated is easier for some people than it is for others, but I would argue that it is the healthiest and most sustainable form of motivation, not just in Pokemon cards, but in life. When you can set your own realistic goalposts and get satisfaction and pride out of accomplishing those goals that you set for yourself and then moving the goalpost and trying to accomplish that next goal, 
you're going to go places, not just in Pokemon cards, but in anything that you do. If you're a player that hasn't won a League Cup yet, then set that goalpost at trying to win your first League Cup. If you're a player who hasn't day twoed your first regional championship yet, then set that as your goal. If you're a player that's finished in the day two of some regional championships and you're feeling disheartened because those day two finishes aren't gonna be enough to carry you to a world championship invite where maybe combined with some locals finishes, they would have been in years past, then I would implore you to set your goalpost at trying to finish in the top 32 of a regional championship. Winning that cash prize and the booster boxes and all of that is incredibly rewarding and getting top 32 at a regional championship is something that's really worth being proud of and that's an accomplishment that you can wear as a badge of honor and feel proud of it doesn't require getting an invite to the world championships if you're someone that's finished in the top 32 of a world championship then set that goalpost at getting your first regional top eight I started competing in the Pokemon TCG in 2012. I top eighted my first regional championship in 2013, but I wasn't really trying to compete for a world championship invite. I was just trying to get better at the game. In 2014, I was going for worlds and so were many of my friends. I had a couple of friends qualify for worlds that year and I top four to regional championship, but I still didn't qualify for the world championships that year. In 2015, I won a regional championship and got second place at a state championships, and I got my first world championship invite, where I ended up finishing ninth place. That was a huge accomplishment for me. I got my world's invite in 2016, 2017, 2018, and 2019. The 2020 season was crazy. I top aided two regionals that year before COVID hit, then COVID hit. And then there was a couple of years where we didn't compete. And then when things did pick back up in 2022, I didn't end up getting my world's invite, even though I had top aided two regional championships. And that's okay. I was still very proud of that season and how things went. I top aided two regional championships and that filled me with a lot of pride. And even though I didn't qualify for worlds that year, I still had some accomplishments that I was really happy with. In 2023, I didn't top eight a regional championship, but I had some really solid finishes. I got a bunch of top 32s, a bunch of top 16s, and I did end up qualifying for Worlds that year. This past year, I top eighted a regional championship again at Indianapolis, but I didn't qualify for Worlds because I just didn't grind hard enough. So what I'm trying to say, is that even as somebody who is aiming to succeed at the highest level in the Pokemon TCG, I don't feel like I need to chase worlds every year. Not everybody is in a life position where it makes sense for them to try and compete to be the world champion at something every single year. Does that make sense? Like, imagine you joined any other hobby, like say, you started playing soccer, and then in a couple of years, you were like, I wanna be the best in the world at soccer. You know how much sacrifice that would take if you started playing baseball and decided you wanted to be the best in the world at baseball. If you started playing chess and you decided you wanted to be the best in the world at chess. Do you know how much sacrifice it would take to be the best in the world at anything else? I have an idea of how much sacrifice that would take having been a competitive runner before I was a competitive Pokemon TCG player. And because of the limits of my body, I was never gonna be able to compete to be the best in the world at running. That's just the way it was. Life is full of those kinds of things. And some people are gonna be in better life positions to compete for world titles than others. And it's not fair, but it's just kind of the way that things are. I do think that the Pokemon Company International has come up with a fair and balanced system to award world championship invites and one that is future proof and makes sense for how big the game is now. I would implore you if you're a competitive Pokemon TCG player to start setting your own goals. 
Take pride in getting a new personal best finish. Really focus on the friendships that you're making and don't overextend yourself to try and accomplish something that might be too far out of reach. I mean, tell you what, nothing's going to make you feel worse than paying to go to every regional championship this year, paying to go to every international championship this year, when maybe you weren't a player who was at that level to get a world championship invite, but then you spent all the money trying, you're probably going to burn yourself out. I would highly recommend focusing in on the events that make sense for you to attend and trying to do the best that you possibly can at them. If you get to a point where you're top eighting regional championships and then you say, hey, I'm pretty good at this game. I think I should go for a world championship invite. That makes sense. But what I feel like I see in the Pokemon TCG is that players decide they want to try and compete to be the best in the world before they ever top eight a regional or anything like that. And that kind of way of going about things doesn't really make sense to me because to me, you should try to conquer the local level, then you should try to conquer the regional level, and then you should try to conquer the world level. That kind of stepladder just really makes sense. So if the world championships feel out of reach, then focus in on whatever level is within reach for you and then try to do the best that you can possibly can at those and I promise you'll feel a sense of accomplishment when you're working hard towards something and obtaining those personal best finishes. Anyways, I know that got a little preachy but I feel very passionately about this subject and I really think that this change is for the best in the long run. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below and thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Take it easy and have a good one. See ya.